I want you to get your cup of coffee, your tea, and let's get ready to uh, go deep into the Word of God so we can be blessed today. I want to bless you with a powerful word today. So I want you to share with me right now the book of Psalms. If you have a notepad and a pen, get a notepad and a pen because this is a beautiful message this morning from the book of Psalms. And the book of Psalms is a book of songs. David was one of the authors and David opens up this powerful book with a message for you and I this morning. Let's, let's look at this first, uh, first Psalms and first six verses. And God's word so read, Blessed is the man who walks in the counsel of the ungodly. I'm sorry. Let me, let me back up. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law. Of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of the waters that bring forth its fruit in its seasons, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. This is a beautiful testament of how God blesses his people. The question I'd like to pose to you this morning as a message is, Who? are you walking with? Who are you walking with? You see, you can't walk with the ungodly and walk with God at the same time. You can't be uh, with one who curses God and call yourself a child of God at the same time. For if you're with someone who is cursing God, are you not cursing God? Let's look at it again. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners. That means if you're constantly around those who are satanistic, or those who are hating, and those who are backbiting, and those who are killing, and those who are doing things that are not of God, then you can't be of God. And God can't bless you. It goes on. If, if we look at that second verse. But his delight. That means your joy. Is in the law of the Lord. You get your joy. Out of serving God. You get your joy. Out of going deep into his word. You get your joy. Your delight. Your entertainment so to speak. Is sharing with God. And of the people of God. And in his law, he meditates day and night. What is his law? His law is his word. This book right here. This is all you need to get your blessings on. You don't have to go to a seminar to figure it out. You need to lean not to your own understanding, but to the understanding of the word of God. And when you do... God has something special for you, and he's going to bless you. It says uh, in that third verse, let's look at that third verse now. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of the water that brings forth its fruit in its season. Do you ever notice a tree that's planted by a river? Have you ever seen a tree that is planted by the river? The river constantly gives the tree all of the nourishment it needs. And its fruit will always come in its due season. That means that God will bless you in due time. 
But you got to be uh, meditating in his word, finding delight in his word, finding joy in his word, walking with God, not with the ungodly. Because if you walk with the ungodly, God will not bless you. But here he tells us that if you walk with God, your blessing will come in season. You see, there's a season for everything. There's a winter season, summer season. But these seasons are for purpose. And God will bless you in your right season. But you must walk with the God. You must walk with Him. Look at the uh, fourth verse now. And I want to dissect this verse by verse this morning because this is so powerful. And look at it throughout the week. And I guarantee that God is going to talk to you and God is going to bless you powerfully. The fourth verse. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind drives away. The shaft. Now, shaft is a husk or uh, of a wheat of grain or um, a shaft is anything that is worthless. So, shaft is something that is worthless. So, if, if a wind comes along and the seed of grain is there, it's going to blow away. But, if we back up to that third verse, he shall be planted by, uh, by a tree, planted by the rivers of water, that brings forth its fruit in its seasons, whose leaf shall not wither. That means that leaf is going to stay fresh year-round. But that, that person who is a sinner, they will be like a shaft. They will be as nothing to God. So if you want to be blessed, my brothers and sisters, you must walk in the counsel of the godly. Now, I'm not telling you that you must tell all your friends uh, that you have been uh, working with and been friends with for years. I can't be with you anymore because you're a sinner. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that you must focus your attention on God. You must give God your full attention. And when someone starts cursing God, you should correct them. Please. Don't curse God in front of me because I believe in God. You know, uh, I hear people that curse God all the time. And when I hear people that curse God and I'm in the same area they're in, I move away from them. And I'm sorry because I cannot curse the God that blesses me. And you can't either. So when people are cursing God, you need to move away from those people and say, I'm sorry, I can't be around you right now because I'm a child of the living God. And he can't bless anyone who curses him. Would you bless anyone that cursed you? Think about it. All right, now, going back to this fifth verse. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. That means there is a heaven and there is an earth and there is a hell. And what that means is there it will be a separation. You hear me? There will be a separation of the good and the bad. And the good cannot stand in the congregation of the bad and be blessed. Because if the good is in the congregation of the bad, God will overlook them. So we must separate ourselves from those entities which seek to take us away from the love of God. We must be like rebels, separating ourselves from those who are not of, uh, of our God, but are of totally of this world and of Satan. There are Satanistic forces in the world. And we have to be apprised of those. We have to understand that this world is, this is the way of the world, sin. But we must be above it. You know what Jesus said? I am from above. You are from beneath. You see, if you're in the earth, this...